Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we are just going to do a very quick first impression of Bunsen Labs. Uh, several people have asked me to look at this and um, it's one I haven't necessarily looked at a lot simply because it is a uh, quite a bit more of a uh, advanced distro that I have not just haven't had the time to to get into uh, really to change a lot of the configurations in here you need to edit XML files and and uh, there's just a lot in here that makes it not particularly a user-friendly desktop and in in my instance why I launched switch to Linux is to move people away from your Windows and your Mac OS into a Linux distro uh, you know a GUI Linux distro that that is just as easy to use and that you can get all of your work done and Bunsen Labs is just not that um, it uses the open box uh, environment uh, it is basically Debian just on top of that um, there's some neat things about it and it's one that I'd like to learn a little bit more about but it's really not one that uh, that I would consider a good user-friendly one so if you use this on a regular basis or you're familiar with open box um, this video might drive you more crazy than uh, than otherwise because I don't know I don't know how to use open box I've never used it I never even looked at it prior to the you know about I've been playing in here for about half an hour to an hour or so um, and, uh, you know, there's just a lot in here. I don't know how a lot of this works. And it's not exactly a desktop that I particularly find useful. But we're going to go ahead and have a look at it uh, regardless. And so here we are. Um, and so what we have here with uh, Bunsen Labs is basically we just have this, uh, this simple desktop environment. It lists all our system info over here. I know you can move this. I have not found where to move it. I think it's buried somewhere inside the theme files. Um, there's also no menus. Um, we have a variety of applications up here that we can use. Uh, we have our web browser, file manager, our text editor, a terminal. And we have some system resources over here. Um, and again, even these up here, I've not yet figured out how to edit. Now, granted, I have not sat here and tried to figure it out. I don't have time for that. Um, but regardless, I did want to show it to people because a lot of people have asked about it. Um, I like Debian, so, um, you know, in that respect is good. I think if I were to be running this, I'd probably spend more time in the terminal than anything because I don't know how, to, how this works, but I know how the terminal works. Um, regardless, to get to the menu, you just right click wherever you happen to be. We have a run command. Uh, you can also see the uh, commands over here. And maybe if somebody uh, helps me out with this, I'm guessing this is shift, but none of these desktops are working for me. I don't know if it's because I'm in a virtual box because, you know, the the uh, alt uh, uh, shortcuts are working for me. None of the other ones are. Um, but regardless, you can right click. You can pull up your menu. Here we have our basic items. I'm wondering if, eh, no, that's not right. I was thinking if maybe if you put them up here, they would end up in this menu, but no, that's not the case. Um, I did uh, edit the menu file here so you can edit the menu. Um, inside of here, you'll see that you can access your various uh, applications. And one of the things that you find uh, that you find interesting here is if something happens to be missing, you have an install menu where you can install some of the more frequently used applications here. So there's Audacity, um, GNOME Media Player, OpenShot, uh, GTK Record My Desktop. So, you know, there's a lot of here that you can install. Even, even this, we can install Chromium, Google Chrome Stable, uh, Opera, or we can use Firefox, which is uh, installed. We have our select or default browser. It does come with uh, an interesting suite of software. It comes with enough that uh, I don't think that if I were using this or I had to use this, that it would necessarily, I'd, I'd need to install a whole lot else. You know, there's some good system tools on here. There's, um, you know, Gparted, um, of course, text editors. There's uh, Synaptic Package Manager, so you can install things with that. We also have some interesting things like the FTP client. Um, we have uh, BitTorrent. Um, I didn't see anything else that was really stuck out. I'm just curious why they put the uh, FileZilla on here. It doesn't seem like they put a lot of other development tools. 
Now, what I liked about this is when you install it, you on first load, there is a, an install script that you can run. And what the script does is it walks you through and allows you to install a lot of extra things. So, um, it, for example, allows you to install uh, Ubuntu PPA support. So that was uh, a nice feature to add to this. So, you know, I went ahead and did that. You can install some extra packages. Many of those I installed. Some of those I did not. Um, but you can see if you uh, you can just pull up uh, a variety of, of different programs. Everything seems to run. I was able to uh, access my network shares without a problem. Just go into your file manager and uh, you'll see that I, I actually have actually uh, accessed my network shares already. Here's our basic um, uh, our basic uh, folder structure. We do have the ability to change our themes around. Again, everything is done here on the uh, right-click menu, and it's um, got to remember where everything is. So here's your appearance. Here's your choose your wallpaper. So there's a variety of different wallpapers you can pick. So you can see here that uh, we have a lot of a lot of really cool desktop uh, wallpapers. So that was kind of neat. Of course, uh, Bunsen Labs, everything's done in kind of like scientific themes. Um, so there is, uh, there's that. Let's go ahead and have a look at our, um, let's have a look at appearances over here. So you can choose from light themes, dark themes, there's some lighter themes. There's, you know, that Raleigh is kind of like an old style, old school type theme, so. Here we get that, our colors. So we can use um, customized settings, uh, which we can't turn on right now without LX section as a session manager. Um, here is your various icon packs you can pick from. A lot of different, you know, well, I guess not a lot, but enough different icon packs. I can use these as our icons. Mouse cursors, we have a couple different mouse cursors available to us. Here's our fonts, other items. So this is pretty much what, what we get. Um, the advantage is this is a super lightweight system. Um, it is, uh, it actually runs, it should run pretty well. The system requirements are extremely low. Let's go ahead and have a look at our, uh, our information from the website about this. See, Google is their default. So here they just kind of give you the, the basics. Um, let's see if there's anything in there that I specifically want to cover. I'm, I'm noticing that my uh, my uh, scroll wheel on my mouse is really messed up on this this distro. I'm not sure what the, what the deal is there. Here's your download. So your minimum system requirements is 256 megabytes of RAM, which is... Um, which is uh, pretty good. Makes this a, a logical choice if you have a you know, super old computer. Uh, one gig of RAM is recommended. Ten gigs of hard drive. So you can see it's really, uh, really not a, a system that is uh, that is going to be heavyweight. You do have the option to run it on a 64-bit, um, uh, 32, and you also have an, an ARM distro that you can choose. So there's a lot of different things. Here's a net install script as well. So these are the repositories that are placed inside of it. So you have um, you have the stable and the testing um, uh, repositories for Debian that you have to choose from. Then you have um, your stable and your testing um, Bunsen Lab repositories, and then there's some other things that you can set up on you as you load it as your first load. So that's just kind of just kind of a, a really big, uh, really quick uh, background on it. You can see that uh, I'm running it. I'm not running it full screen because we don't have the uh, guest editions installed. I did not want to have to mess with any of that. But this is just a, a real quick, uh, real quick overview here on on what this desktop looks like. If I were doing anything um, more with this, I'd really want to spend some time studying it. But again, I haven't done that just because you know it's just not. Uh, not a type of desktop I'd find myself using a lot, and I don't generally know a whole lot about things I wouldn't use a whole lot, just because I learn things on an as-needed-to-know basis. But I have had enough people asking me about this, 
Um, my overall take, I mean, I think it's a good system in that we have uh, Debian, we have our current stable Debian system, uh, which I like that, um, you know, so you can run it pretty well. It's certainly not a desktop for a new user. And uh, I can definitely see this as using this as a desktop that you might learn a lot more on because really to edit your menus, I think there is a, a, a GUI menu editor here, but I actually was doing the menu editing with, um, uh, I was doing my menu editing with my, um, where's it at? I got to find it again. Okay, so here we have a GUI configuration tool. Uh, here's a GUI menu editor. You can also edit your menu editor over here. So here's what our GUI menu editor looks like. So we have our menu here. So this runs up here. So here's our run program. And you can see that how it's running. It's running execution commands, terminal, web browser, media player. And then you can expand these guys down to see what is in here. So for example, um, let's see, there's that, there's that. So like here, let's see, let me just remove Dropbox because I would never use Dropbox. I do not like that uh, individual uh, company. So so there we've just kind of made the changes to it. Um, I think this should be save the menu. And then what you'll notice though is that you have to log in and log out before it will take effect. Well, I thought so anyway. I thought that was, I thought we took... Uh, uh, maybe the GUI one does does take effect immediately. Uh, when you adjust it with the um, XML file, then you actually have to uh, log out and log back in for the menu to take effect. But this is kind of how you do all of the different desktop configurations. There are a whole lot more configurations you can do. You just have to know how to go through the uh, XML files. There's a lot of documentation to help you along with all this stuff. It's just not things that uh, I'm used to here. So. You can see that this is the whole the whole menu. You can add things. You can take things out. Um, let me see if I can find a. Oh, the word install was not found. It's looking for how I can add or remove the installer scripts. So you can see here these installs. Wanted to see if I could find that in the menu, but was not able to find that. So anyway, uh, this is just. Um, you know, just a, a brief thing about uh, about this particular distro here. Nice Bunsen Labs. Kind of cool. Um, if I had a lot of extra time in my life, I might actually really enjoy spending some time learning how to do all this stuff. It's just a reality for me. I don't. So if uh, you do uh, use this and uh, let me know how it works for you. I'd really like to know your thoughts. And if you have, uh, you know, a lot of easy, cool tips that you want to link down below. Um, go ahead and link those in. I'll go ahead and put some links in here to the main site itself and some configuration files. But, you know, it's just I just had enough people asking me about this particular distro. I thought I'd go ahead and download it, play with it a little bit, and see what I think of it. So those are kind of my thoughts. So uh, with that being said, uh, thanks for watching. And um, if you would like to help support what we are doing here at Switch to Linux, you can go to switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Uh, let me know in various comments the type of distros you'd like to see, the type of software you'd like to see, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, accommodate those as, as best we can. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.